Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie on Thursday, November the 23rd, 2023. And if you're in the United States, happy Thanksgiving. So today um, I want to talk about two um, right-wing uh, commentators. Uh, you know, they do loads of YouTube videos, podcasts, that kind of thing. And they are Ben Shapiro and Candice Owens. And uh, they are having um, a dispute. So there is a bit of a rift on the right. And so this dispute um, is about Israel and Hamas. And so Ben Shapiro, um, who is Jewish, um, is a obviously a He's a passionate supporter of Israel and he believes that um, Israel is absolutely right in its reaction to um, Hamas's invasion. Um, and he, he's, for example, completely opposed to any, any type of ceasefire and uh, he wants Israel to finish off the job. Uh, Candace Owen, on the other hand, uh, she... Um, she seems to be concerned about the impact of um, Israel's um, reaction um, in in Gaza. Um, and you know, from what I can see about her and what she's saying, she seems to be a little bit of an isolationist. She, you know, doesn't believe, I think, that um, that the U.S. should um, get involved in. Um, foreign wars you know, uh, but you know the, the, the US has got enough problems at home without having to worry about what's going on I don't know with Ukraine or um, the Middle East so there is um, a big dispute going on between the two you know I don't really know a great deal about it but I really thought it was just an opportunity to look at the, the horoscopes um, of these two people and, in fact, to look at their composite chart. And, you know, that's really what I wanted to do today. So I, I don't think it's going to take very long. I'm, I'm suspecting that this is going to be a relatively brief video. But before I do that, I want to look at the astrology for today, which is Thursday, November the 23rd. 2023. Of course, it's not just the astrology. Um, I'm also going to be looking at the I Ching. So uh, here is the chart for today, um, Thursday, Thanksgiving in the United States, uh, set for set for noon. Um, uh, were you planning on having a great Thanksgiving? Um, well. The sun is square Saturn. Um, you can see there is the sun, there is square Saturn. You know, by the after, if you're in America, by the afternoon, um, this this um, this square to Saturn will be um, will be separating. Uh, but still, you are going to feel its influence wherever you are. You know, it's it's quite a big deal. You know, the sun in Sagittarius likes to have fun, likes to enjoy itself, um, likes to go different places. And then it's square Saturn. Saturn, uh, you know, squelches people's enthusiasm. Maybe with good reason. You know, Saturn's quite sensible. Um, so um, there may be... In some areas, it might be a bit downbeat, but uh, the sun Saturn opposition is past its prime in America, at least. In America, at least. Um, another thing going on is that uh, the moon is in Aries, uh, a sort of opposition Venus. Um, so if you're in America, if you're celebrating Thanksgiving, moon opposition Venus, what does that mean? It means indulgence. It means overdoing things. Uh, so some of us, uh, not me, I mean, I, Thanksgiving is irrelevant to me, even though I'm in the US, I don't really get it. But um, uh, moon opposition Venus can be about indulgence, uh, going over the top, eating too much, spending too much, drinking too much emoting too much so that's uh, that's moon opposition 
moon opposition venus um is it going to be a good day as far as well certainly if you're in america oh, it's going to be okay uh but uh nothing to write home about um so if you're celebrating thanksgiving and you're looking forward to thanksgiving uh you know it could be better could be worse um um, nothing amazing to report there. Um, Mars, look at Mars. Mars is about to leave Scorpio. Um, you know, if if you're a Scorpio, you know Mars is you know Mars has been in your star sign for a long time. In general, you know all this stuff in Scorpio. There's been a lot of intensity, um, a lot of emotion, and this prolonged Scorpio period is finally coming to an end. Um, but Mars is not quite out of Scorpio, so there may be a final sting in the tail. Um, as far as other things going on, um, in parts of the world there could be, you know, there could be anger and action. Saturn is, there's Saturn, it's, Saturn is um, um, square the sun mars midpoint um you know that's quite an important aspect um because remember the sun has just made a square to saturn mars is coming up to a square of saturn so if you take the sun and mars as a um as a unified planet i mean i know it's not but if you merge them into one entity, that one entity, that Sun-Mars um, combined energy is square Saturn today. Um, and I think that could be a big deal. Um, so, you know, going back to what your plans were today, it, it you know, that, that sort of, you know, it, it sort of puts a negative shadow on things. Um it it does suggest a certain amount of uh, of frustration and anger, and yeah, maybe that will spoil your Thanksgiving celebrations. Maybe, um, but there is anger. Um, I think could well affect war zones. You know, see what's going on in Ukraine. You've got in, I suppose, in. Uh, is there? I could get confused. Is there a ceasefire now in um, in Gaza? But you know, Gaza. Gaza, Ukraine, you're going to see problems uh, because simply because Saturn is on the Sun Mars midpoint. In uh, in some ways, Saturn on the Sun Mars midpoint is kind of the peak of the whole thing. So that that yeah, I think that is actually quite a, a very serious um, aspect. Um, so there's a lot of sort of suppressed violence, um, anger. Um, that that's a, that's a big midpoint. Um, and you can see it by eye you know it's it's hot sat in the halfway between its square of sun and its square of mars so i i think that aspect um saturn on that midpoint is the most important astrological event of the day um and so all things being equal for many of us it could actually be um quite quite a difficult day okay sorry to Sorry to um, be negative, um, but, uh, you know, that's what I see. Um, OK, so what I want to do now is do my forecasts for the for the um, 12 signs. Uh, so here we go. These are my forecasts for today, which is Thursday, November the 23rd, 2023. Aries, Mars, your ruling planet is on the brink, ready to move from Scorpio to Sagittarius. You feel as if you've learnt a lot, especially in terms of emotions. However, you're not quite ready to embark on a new journey, even though you feel good and ready. There's one relationship that needs to be carefully negotiated. Taurus. For some time, you've been feeling self-conscious, feeling that you're being carefully observed. Maybe you are, maybe you're not, it doesn't matter. And besides, you can't expect other people to ignore you altogether. But things are changing, and you'll find, in a way that's real or imagined, that you are no longer a topic of prime interest. And I mean that in a positive sense. Gemini, you want to forge ahead, 
but you do have to consider other people. This might be difficult, at least in the first instance, but if you don't have outside support, you're unlikely to get very far. And in the process, you might have to deal with someone who you find seriously annoying. A bit of tolerance goes a long way. Cancer. You're a hard person to ignore, and whatever you're doing, you'll get plenty of attention. But you need to consider what impact you are having, because with the moon making a stressful aspect of Venus, there's scope for friction. There's also scope for overindulgence, especially if you're in the US with its Thanksgiving holiday. Leo. There are lots of things you want to do, but you might feel curiously stuck. It's because the sun, your ruler, is making a square aspect to Saturn. The emotional environment prevents you from being yourself and you may be concerned about how other people are going to respond to you. Be patient. You'll get your chance. Virgo. You can't be in control of everything and the underlying dynamics can sometimes bring you to a standstill. Indeed, the things we are most familiar with are the things that can appear to be the most damaging. But don't exaggerate. It's a temporary, situ it's a temporary situation and soon enough you'll get back into the swing of things. Libra. You need to take into account other people and accept that your various relationships can't be avoided or put on hold. But that doesn't mean that you have to do what you're told. Taking into account someone's opinions is not the same as following them. Elsewhere, be careful with money and unplanned expenditure should be avoided. Scorpio. Mars, your ruler, is about to leave Scorpio. You've been in the centre of things for long enough and now you can get some respite. Though perhaps you also lose some of your power. But perhaps you need to concentrate on new things. For example, what you have and what you don't have. And how you can give yourself what you need. Sagittarius. There is a small thing that needs to be sorted out. And until it is out of the way, you might find that it's difficult to make progress. However, it shouldn't take long to deal with the matter. Then you can start enjoying yourself and start using your creative talents. Avoid following the crowd. Capricorn. You're the one in control and not much happens without your permission. Indeed, you can bring things to a halt with a couple of words. It's all because of a square aspect between the Sun and Saturn. You're Saturn and everyone else is the Sun. But be aware of your responsibilities and consider other people's feelings. Aquarius. Aquarius, your star sign, like Capricorn, is a Saturn ruled sign. And with Saturn being aspected by the Sun, you have a lot of influence. This influence might be somewhat uncomfortable. Part of you just doesn't want to get involved. In terms of close relationships, you need to accept a difference of opinion. Or perhaps it's just a difference of approach. Pisces. Things are in the right place and you'll be treated with a high degree of respect. So consider your various ambitions and how best to achieve them. It may be necessary to take a leap of faith, but if you trust your intuition, the end result should be fine. When it comes to money, a bit of caution won't go amiss. So I'm now going to switch to the I Ching. And uh, as always, uh, I ask the question, what is Thursday going to be like for people watching this video? And the first hexagram I got was hexagram 31, which is um, influence. Um, it's making our influence felt on the world around us. So. That seems to be quite fortunate, at least on the face of it. Um, 
people are going to listen to us but uh, you know we have to be careful we don't want to take things too quickly you know this is about something that is you know developing quite gradually um we need to you know express our opinions wait see how people respond um you know take it it's really important to take it slowly um and then yeah things are going to be okay but i think many of us are, are going to jump the gun um because uh you know the third line moves third line from the bottom moves and that uh that can be unfortunate um it's it's indicating that we might just do something just on the spur of a moment we're going slowly 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 and we suddenly see oh yeah that looks good let's go for it um maybe that happens in a social situation we we do something you know spur of a moment thing dramatic uh and it just doesn't work out and that actually chimes with the fact that um today there is um sun in sagittarius square saturn in pisces you know sun in sagittarius wants to do stuff wants to wants to be impulsive but saturn just squelches it so don't be tempted you know that 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 impulsive mo movement that but, but we're so tempted to do it could wreck everything it could wreck the day so take it slowly um you know things are improving uh, we are able to get the attention we want but slowly slowly don't 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 take it too quickly so that's that's really important um if you want to have a good day now because we've got a moving line um influence um does does move um this hexagram we get we get a second hexagram uh which is hexagram 45 gathering together i mean if you're in america that's obvious um gathering together it's thanksgiving people meeting uh that just speaks for itself i don't really have to explain that do i um but uh gathering together in terms of the i ching is often about gathering together around one person i mean that may be us if we're um, um uh, uh, we regard ourselves as a charismatic leader um or it may be someone else um but so all of us you know what we have to do we what having made our our attempts to have an impact on the world slowly slowly without doing anything impulsive you know by the end of the day people and ideas can come together you know but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to actually all meet in one place you can meet in so many different ways whether it's communication text messages emails zoom whatever um but it's a good idea to come together um to gather together you know hopefully around um, one particular person provided it's a right person but it does seem that towards the end of the day you know someone perhaps charis charismatic who means well uh as well you know just because you're charismatic doesn't mean um doesn't mean you're you're a, a good person charismatic people can be dangerous um but uh, gathering together talks about where the day should be ending and uh, so that's that's what we should be focusing on but obviously this this hexagram is going to work a lot better if you're in the US because that does that does um that does link with thanksgiving um extremely well okay so that's the i ching um and now i quickly want to look at uh, um ben shapiro and um and candis owen i you know i don't want to spend long on them i'm not making any predictions forecasts i just I just wanted to look at their charts basically um because you know they've been on youtube so much so it might we might be asking you know who are these people um I know people have okay some people might not have heard of them um but uh um they are quite they have they you know they are much they are talked about a lot and they certainly talk a lot so okay let's let's have a look um so here is the, the horoscope of Ben Shapiro 
Um, he was born on January the 15th, 1984 at 12.57 p.m. January the 15th, he shares the same birthday as Martin Luther King. And also um, Edward Teller, the inventor of the hydrogen bomb. Um, so it's interesting that Ben Shapiro's chart has pretty much everything on the side on the western side on the side of the descendant uh, all towards this side of the chart um on the face of it that that's not what you'd expect i mean ben shapiro gives the impression of being um someone who you know wants to be in front wants to be you know express his opinions um being you know very assertive so you might think oh well you'd expect all his planets to be on the other side of the chart towards the ascendant um so when you've got someone who has got all their planets um on the west side of the chart um you you might be thinking um uh this is someone who takes into account other people might not seem like it but he does um, I suppose, you know, he is someone who, his, his his thing is arguing. I mean, that's what he does. You know, he, there are always YouTube videos of him arguing with people. Usually he's arguing with someone who is woke, someone who is left, on the left, some woke student. And everyone, you know, there you see these videos, which is something like, how Ben Shapiro rips to, rips apart a woke student. That's a standard thing. Um, and so if you've got all those planets on the, on the west, on the west side, it means that you're really having to consider what other people are saying. Uh, it does give you, does give you a bit of an advantage perhaps, because you are having to listen very carefully, um, to, um, to what is being, what is being said. So that may be an explanation, um, of that of that um, perhaps unexpected hemisphere emph hem hemisphere emphasis um but you know the moon in gemini really does stand out on its own moon in gemini it's about conversation um it's about talking um it's his natural defense um you know it, it's his it's his own personal defense mechanism when he doesn't know what to do when he's confused when he's worried he talks and uh Moon in Gemini is is Moon in Gemini is conjunct the North Node, uh, so that's the way he should be going. It is the right place for him to be, um, though he does have Kamadruma Yoga. The Moon is kind of separated from the rest of his horoscope, um, so I'm thinking um, maybe there's a certain separateness there from other people. You know, I know he looks comes over as obviously being very sociable and you know always people around him um always debating but in a private sense um there seems to be something rather solitary there uh someone who doesn't necessarily always find it easy to be part of society regardless of what we see um you know prince harry has moon in uh, has this thing kamadrumi yoga um uh, that that moon yeah separated away from the rest of the chart um so other things other things in that chart he has got uh he's got mars pluto conjunction um and that mars pluto conjunction is sextile his mercury so he's got mercury in capricorn um so mercury in capricorn is part of the way he communicates. I mean, I think the moon in Gemini is a lot of the way he communicates, but Mercury in Capricorn, I mean, in a way, it's quite a good place for Mercury because Mercury um, is the way one thinks and analyzes. Capricorn is, does it in a very sort of methodical kind of way. Um, and then it's sextile, the Mars, his Mars-Pluto conjunction. So Mars-Pluto is, uh, it's about power, uh, transforming power, um, wanting to be in control and uh, and it's sextile his mercury so I think that's an example you know of a sextile working um, working extremely well um, another thing about mercury um, is it's on the 
ascendant midheaven midpoint um or, or you know it's actually square the ascendant or is it it's square the ascendant midheaven midpoint but he's got mercury on the ascendant midheaven midpoint you know the ascendant midheaven is a time and a place it's where you are when you've got mercury on the ascendant midheaven midpoint you communicate well you, that's how you deal with the time and the place um, you know, yesterday I said that the sun moon midpoint is really important. Also, the ascendant midheaven midpoint is important if you've got a, an accurate time of birth. Um, so I think that that does um, fit him very well. Um, as far as his religiousness uh, is concerned, to finish up, um, well, he's got the sun in the ninth. Ninth is a religious house. He's got Jupiter Neptune conjunction. That also can be quite religious. Jupiter, he's got it, it's Jupiter Neptune conjunction. I know he he comes over as being a sort of sensible down to earth Capricorn, but that Jupiter Neptune conjunction, there's a sort of element of fantasy there. Um, you know, a belief in things, a belief that things can be in a particular way. Um, even a naivety there. I mean, you don't see him as being a naive person, but maybe that's part of how the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction, um, how the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction is working. And his Saturn is, he's actually got Saturn, not exactly on it, but he's got Saturn on a Jupiter-Neptune midpoint. Um, he's, I think he's desperately trying to take the belief what you know what his religion is and he's trying to structure it and make it fit in with his world and i know he sounds very comes comes over as being very confident but you know maybe this is a bit of a struggle for him um i don't know uh that is possible and i want to switch to uh candace owens um i'm we don't have a time of birth for her um I'm not going to go into such detail with her chart. Um, she is a Taurus. Um, a sun, Venus in Taurus. Mercury may be in Taurus. Uh, because I don't have a time of birth, it's possible that her Mercury is in Gemini. Maybe her Mercury is in Gemini. Uh, she does talk a lot. Um, we've got to sort of explain that, haven't we? Um, I'd guess... I'd guess her Mercury was in Gemini, but but she was born later in the day, but I don't know. Um she's got uh moon in a moon in Aquarius. Uh it's good to have a moon in Aquarius, particularly if you're American. You know, America the United States has a moon in Aquarius, so you do well in a country where you've got moon in you know, moon in Aquarius, it's good America it works well. So she, you know, that's I suppose is Moon in Aquarius, someone who is quite sort of independent. Um, independent-minded, can think outside the box. Uh, uh, so that's that works well for her. Um, I think with this Taurus stuff, her Sun, Venus in Taurus, you know, there can be a problem. You know, look at that Sun, Venus, it's opposition Pluto. Uh, this is someone who doubles down. Um, you know, once she's involved in an argument or in a, in a position, she will double down on it. And, you know, I'm thinking in terms of her dispute with Ben Shapiro, you know, how did she get herself into this situation? I, I kind of get, you know, I'm not I'm, I'm not going to express an opinion about the subject of their dispute, which is uh, how Israel should be behaving in terms of Gaza. Um, but uh, maybe under the circumstances, she was a bit unwise to take such a strong position on it. And of course, having made this position, um, it's she's she, yeah she's doubled she's a Taurus she's doubling down on it and it is opposition Pluto, uh, so this is this is a woman who is, you know it's a, it, these in fixed in fixed signs, yeah she's stubborn she's very opinionated she her she may actually have a, a certain lack of flexibility there, um, and that might might harm her. Um, also note that she's got Mars in Cancer opposition uh, Uran opposition Uranus. That's that's kind of looking for a fight, isn't it? Uh, there is there is definitely um, uh, something a bit aggressive about Mars opposition Uranus. 
Also point out that she has got um, Venus semi-square Mars. Venus semi-square Mars, um, I suppose that represents an attractive and charismatic personality. Um, but also when you've got when you've got a Venus Mars aspect in a chart like this, you know, Venus Mars is about attraction. It's um, um, but it's a kind of attractiveness that uh, is not uniform. It's not everyone goes for it. Some people think it's attractive. Some people don't think it's attractive. So uh, some people really think she's wonderful. Some people um, really can't stand her. Um, um, also, Mars and Venus, it's on the Aries point. So she's got Mars on the Aries point. This is a person who... The Aries point is the world at large. So Mars hitting the world at large in a, you know, in a... Uh, uh, that's how she comes over, as being an aggressive woman, um, as being a combative woman. Mars on Aries. Mar Mars on the Aries point. And also Venus there. That's, uh, that's Venus semi-square Mars aspecting the Aries point. So this is a combative woman. Um, now, another thing about Candace Owen is she's got no fire in her chart. And guess what? Ben Shapiro, he also <laughs> hasn't... Sorry, Ben Shapiro... Not, not, so Ben Shapiro... Yeah, Ben Shapiro's got loads of fire in his chart. Well, not loads, but he's got Venus in... Um, he's got... Um, He's, yeah, he, Ben Shapiro's got Venus in Venus in Sagittarius, um, so that's good. Uh, no, so Ben Shapiro's got fire in his chart, but yeah, Candace Owen has has not got any fire in her chart. Um, I think that's important because um, uh, you know f she has to find the fire from outside. Uh, you know, people who have no fire in their chart, it can work in different ways. Um, you know, they can find you know they can they can they can come over as having no spark but there can be a compensation issue um so in her case we're dealing with a compensation uh if there's no fire she's looking for fire she's looking for where the energy and the action is um and so maybe this whole dispute about um Israel and and Hamas is really firing her up because she does have no fire. She goes to where it goes to where the action is, and there's her her Mars Uranus opposition. So I want to finish up by looking at Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens' um, composite chart. Uh, so this is where I just taken the midpoint of each of their planets so you basically the composite chart takes midpoint of their suns midpoints of their moons um and so forth so uh that's you just go through it um looking 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 at look going through the midpoints and building up the composite chart and the only thing i really want to say about the composite chart is that in this composite chart venus is at 148 pisces mars is at 121 Virgo. So there's Venus Mars opposition in the composite chart at the right at the beginning of Virgo. And um if we just to, if we put the composite chart in the um, in the middle and we put um uh what's kind of roughly what's going on today. Um, um that's so we so you see there's a venus mars composite and then we can see there's saturn so transiting saturn has been hitting their venus mars um their their composite venus mars opposition and right now the sun has just gone into sagittarius uh, you see the sun is making squares to their composite venus mars mars is going to change sign into Sagittarius and make squares to that that composite Venus Mars so that fault line in their composite chart you know this chart that brings the two of them together is being firstly activated by Saturn and now over the next few days it's going to be activated by um, the Sun and Mars so short term um, I think their, their dispute um, is probably going to continue uh, what happens a bit later 
I don't know. Anyway, uh, that is those are the two. Those are the charts of um, Ben Shapiro and um, Candice Owen. Um, I, I did want to look at their charts, and I thought this was a good opportunity to do it. Um, uh, I haven't really gone into great detail about it. Um, I mean, some of you, of course, might not be interested in them, in which case you wouldn't be watching this video, but you, know, you would have stopped watching this video long ago. But anyway, um, thank you for listening, and I will talk to you again tomorrow.